Hello, today I'm looking at this Bassius 100 watt multi-port USB charger. If you're new to the channel, there's a whole series on these power adapters where I test them for the power in and out while also comparing them to other offerings. There are billions of power adapters in use and this series will help you make an informed buying decision since not all devices are created equal. Let's open it up. So Bassius does give you a little bit more packaging here. You do get some stickers. So when we look at the box, we can see they give us a whole bunch of specifications on here about some of the various options for how the ports work and the voltages and currents and things like that. They do give us a weight on there. They have the safety listing right on the outside of the box. They do provide a 100 watt rated cable inside the box, which is a nice touch. And we've tested these before and we know it's actually a pretty decent cable. The user manual is not too overcomplicated for this power adapter. They give you all the different power outputs. The packaging weighs 72 grams. The power adapter weighs 209 grams. All right, so here's the actual power adapter. We can see we get two USB-C ports, two USB-A ports, the foldy plugs. And we can see our ETL for our safety listing. And then a whole bunch of text telling us about all these different USB ports, which when you have these four port devices, it does get a little bit confusing. So we'll just have to go through and plug random things in and see what happens. They don't give you any watt numbers on these. We can see that light is lit up. It's nice and dim. And one of the things we saw on the Bassius power adapter that we looked at before, that was in the 120 watt class, was it had some strange effects on the way it consumed power. It drew like a really, really uh, short duration peak that was very high power, which is, wasn't so great. And it also made a little bit of noise. I can say that this one has none of those effects. So I don't hear anything coming out of it. And the way it's consuming power is much more stable. It still does a little bit of a kind of an up and a down, but it's much lower number and it's it's generally a little bit more stable so that's a good thing to see so they did make some improvements to this 100 watt power adapter versus the 120 watt power adapter just for some quick comparisons here's the satoshi 100 watt power adapter which is a little bit smaller and here's the anchor nano 2 65 watt which is a lot smaller and in terms of weights this is about half and this is about the same so 100 watt power adapters tend to be in that about 200 gram weight class you can see we have a red light on our board over here which means we have our five volt mode and the red light indicating that it has multiple modes available. So when I push the button, we should be able to see this voltage change up here. So five, nine, 12, 15, 20, and a 20 volt PPS mode. So that means this power adapter is basically gonna be able to charge anything you plug in, which is a good thing. So here we are at 10 watts right now on the five volt mode. And what we see over here is something that's very good. We already can tell that this device has power factor correction. We can see 0.88 uh, as our power factor, which means it's already doing um, correcting, even though it's only running at one tenth of its rated load. Our current peaks are very low. We have low current consumption, so, and the THD is low. So all of the factors that will come into play that lead to good power quality are all positives. Everything looks really good. All right, so I have the device running at 100 watts. It's full rated load right now. And we can see we have about 110 watts in, so we're about 90% efficiency, which isn't too bad. You can see our THD is very low, so those extra harmonics that are causing issues are all very, very low, which is great. Uh, current's low, and the uh, peak current is also pretty low. When we do some comparison with the Invisi device that we looked at previously, these numbers are much nicer. So those lower harmonics and high power factor mean that this device is being very effective in using the AC power from the grid. All right, so when we look at the waveforms for this device, we can see that it has a pretty nice clean wave set. So we can see that the voltage and current waveforms are basically on top of each other. So we have nice clean power being consumed by this device. So what we can see on the USB-C port is that it has PD 3.0, which means it can deliver various fixed voltages. And we can see that it does the five, nine, 12, 15, and 20 volts for those, as well as it has a variable output voltage mode. And within that mode, it can do up to 20 volts as well. So it can supply a full range of outputs uh, to meeting the USB power delivery specifications. Now, something else to check is how it handles multiple ports and multiple plugs. So I have another USB set up here. I don't have a load connected to it necessarily, but what I want to check is if I change the voltage here, so we have our nine volts coming in, and what happens if I plug in another USB port? I want to see if that resets, and it does. 
So this one does reset that down to five volts. Now, of course, we can change that at any time again back up. And your device that's connected on the output over here is going to have to re-request that higher voltage. That's the only thing to note is that it does reset those ports when you plug in a new port. So when we disconnect this, again, it also does the same thing. It resets that back down to the lowest condition. Let's check what happens with the USB-A port. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that to the 9 volts again. And we have a USB-A device to plug in here. All right, so in that case, it did not reset. So this device was able to negotiate its voltage. So we have 20 right now. You can also see that it does 15, 9, and 5. So we get all the voltages out of the QC ports, the USB-A ports, which are QC capable. And we can see that those are able to negotiate their voltages without resetting this up here. Let's plug in another USB-A port. So when you plug in a USB port, it does reset these ports. It just reset again. And now it renegotiated its new voltage. So now this is back up to 20 volts. The same thing is happening with these, it seems like these two USB-C ports, they negotiate together and these two USB-A ports negotiate together. We have a kind of similar situation we've seen on previous power adapters. Okay, so right now I have three of these ports sitting at 20 volts and this port is sitting at five volts. There's effectively no load on the device right now, but what I wanna check is what the overload condition is when all four ports are plugged in at once. So we're gonna go ahead and start to pulling some power off of this one over here. So we're at 10 watts right now. Let's take it up to 25, 35, 40, and it's off. Okay, so with all the ports plugged in, it looks like it can only deliver about 35 watts into each one of these ports, which would make sense because if we were to able to deliver, you know, 30 or so watts into this port and 30 or something so watts into this port, it leaves us with a pretty low amount of power to deliver into these other ports. One of the things we did see is that the USB port did reset to the five volt condition and our other port also reset to the five volt condition, but our two USB-A ports did in fact not reset. So this one's still holding its 20 volts and this one's holding five volts. So again, we see that kind of division line where these two ports operate a little bit independently of these two ports. All right, let's take the device up to overload and see what it can do for maximum power. 105 watts, 106 watts, 107 watts, and it's out at 108. Turn it off, it does recover to the five volts so you don't have to disconnect it. It does have to renegotiate that higher voltage again, but it looks just fine to me. 108 watts is not too bad. It's uh, it's not set too conservatively and it's not set too high to be unsafe. They're They're checking the boxes with the overload condition. Looks pretty good to me. The most important part of the test, applying the sticker. All right, so when we look at the overall numbers for this one, what we see is that it's really not bad. It has pretty good efficiency. It has good power factor. It has low harmonic distortion. And that power quality score number shot up through the roof because it has power factor correction, which is a crucial feature for a power adapter in this size range. When we compare this to the other power adapters, especially in its class range, we have a new winner. Uh, Bassius does it again. This power adapter scores 171 out of 200. Basically, it's, it's almost as good as it can get for a realistic power adapter. And the other great feature about this one is that power factor correction is turned on even in the lower voltage modes, which also helps just increase that rating just that little bit more. When we take a look at the idle graph, we can see that it's really not too bad. It does have a little bit more idle power consumption as is typical for these larger 100 watt power adapters. And this is where we run into one of the negatives for this power adapter. This does not meet the DOE 6 efficiency claim that it has on the package because it does draw a little bit too much power consumption for that idle mode. It's a very small number and the power is relatively clean in that mode, but it does have a little bit too much power consumption to meet those requirements. And they do have the claim on the package that it does meet those requirements. When we take a look at this in terms of its overall performance though, we see that it's the leader. So this is the new top of the stack for power adapters. You get 100 watts out, you get multiple ports, and it's the best one. All right, so that's about it. This is the Bassius 100 watt USB power adapter, and it's the new winner. We have a new class leader. It has multiple ports. It does have some reset conditions on those ports, so there may be some situations where you have to plug and unplug devices to get them to recognize. It does have a little bit high idle power consumption, but overall in use, this device is gonna use nearly the least amount of power while you're charging your devices. And of all the ones I've tested so far, this one is the best. The website is up now and this web address does work. So you can go and check it out anytime you want. Have a play around and let me know what you think. This 130 watt power adapter is gonna be on the way. I do have a schedule of what power adapters are going to be coming up in, in the future, so if you want to check that out, it's on my website. The link's down in the description. And thanks for watching.
I'll see you in the next one.